The temporal lobe is located on the ventral or bottom part of the cerebral cortex, anterior or forward of the occipital cortex. The temporal lobe is involved in three major categories of processing. First, complex visual processing. Second, simple and complex auditory processing. And third, language comprehension. In terms of complex visual processing, the temporal cortex is involved in four major categories of visual processing. First, the temporal cortex is where we process color information. In the retina, where we perceive light, there are three different types of photoreceptor cells that are sensitive to three primary colors, red, blue, and green. So anything that we are looking at that is made up of different colors in the retina, these different colors are compressed to three different values, a red value, a blue value, and a green value. In a way, we might say that we are actually very colorblind creatures because we are only able to detect values of red, blue, and green in any stimulus that we look at. However, the temporal lobe creates the experience of being sensitive to an infinite number of colors simply by combining those red, blue, and green values. By the way, this is why color printers and old color televisions only need to have three different colors because our eyes are only capable of detecting three different colors. But then our temporal lobe combines those colors together. Damage to this function of the temporal lobe leads to a condition known as achromatopsia, which is a profound type of color blindness in which an individual is not capable of detecting any colors or having any knowledge of the experience of detecting colors. The second complex visual function that the temporal lobe is important for is the detection and identification of objects and shapes. That is to say, identifying and labeling different objects that we perceive in our environment. For example, this is a horse, and this is a tree, and this is a guitar. And this is a lamp. People who damage this function of the temporal cortex develop a very unusual neurological condition known as object agnosia, in which they can no longer attach the names or labels of different objects to the correct object. So, for example, if they were looking at a tree, they would know that it was, in fact, a tree, but they would not be able to name it. If you ask them what it was called, they would say, Mm, I'm not sure, or call it a whatchamacallit or something like that, but then they could tell you that it was a type of plant that could grow very tall, that has leaves, is made out of wood, has branches, but they couldn't in fact name it and call it a tree. What's even more striking is when the object and the verb for using the object are the same. They cannot name the object, but they can name the verb for using it. For example, snowboard and snowboarding. So you show them a snowboard, they couldn't tell you that it was a snowboard, but when you ask them what you do with it, they would say that you snowboard with it. The third type of complex visual processing performed by the temporal lobe is identification of faces. When you look at the faces of people who you know, including celebrities, you can label those faces. But a person who damages this region of the brain has a condition known as prosopagnosia, where they no longer recognize any familiar faces, including the faces of their family, including their own face. The fourth and final form of visual processing that occurs in the temporal lobe is the perception of motion. This region of the temporal lobe generates the internal experience of self-moving as well as objects moving. People who damage this function have a condition known as motion agnosis, the inability to perceive visual motion. In addition to its visual processing functions, the temporal lobe is also where we hear things. There is a part of the temporal cortex known as the auditory cortex where we process and identify sounds. The final and perhaps most important function of the temporal lobe is that this is the region of the brain that allows us to understand language. Language comprehension takes place in a region known as Wernicke's area, one of the most critical and important regions of the brain, for it enables us to understand speech and all other forms of language. It is helping you to make sense of the words that you are hearing right now. Wernicke's area uses both the sounds and the context, the meaning, of what is being said to help us understand spoken language. It separates the words into what seem like distinct individual words, and in fact the sounds of language are actually blending together. The longest pauses in recorded speech take place in the middle of words and not in between words. You probably notice this if you are ever learning a foreign language. When you go to the language lab and listen to tapes or videos of people speaking that language, it sounds like all the words are blending together, because in fact they are. 
But once you master a language, it then sounds like each word is distinct and separate, and that is a function of the temporal lobe. So Wernicke's area, the region that helps us to decode language, is not only important for understanding speech, but is also important for understanding other forms of language, such as written language and American Sign Language. If Wernicke's area becomes damaged, this leads to a devastating form of brain injury known as Wernicke's aphasia, where an individual is no longer unable to understand any form of speech or language at all, including written language or reading, including American Sign Language. They are completely cut off from all other people. They are even probably cut off from their own verbal thoughts. A different part of the brain is responsible for speaking, so a person with Wernicke's aphasia would still be generating verbal thoughts, but would be unable to understand these thoughts. They would also be unable to read or understand sign language. So in summary, the temporal lobe is critical for complex visual processing, simple and complex auditory processing, and language comprehension.